Let me get my poem back. Ah, here we go. Uh, these are it's a few notes on a poem by Edna St. Vincent Millay. The poem is called What Lips My Lips Have Kissed and Where and Why. Now, um, this is a poem that I've been teaching for many years and it's kind of amuses me in a certain way because uh, it becomes a litmus test uh, of my students. The same as the, as the short story, uh, The Storm is a litmus test and at some students um, they see something liberating in the, in the brief sexual affair of uh, two characters in the storm. In this one, you know that it is talking about um, sexual relationships. It's from the perspective of a woman who's now gotten older. We don't know exactly how old, but she's associated with a tree uh, that's, that's in the story. Um, and we know she's thinking about people that she laid with, um, you know, sometime in the past to the point where she doesn't remember their names. Now, does that mean there were so many young men with her that she, they, they all mixed together in her mind or whether it's so long ago or a combination of those two things? I'm not really sure. But one thing though, she wrote this during the modernist age and it is very, uh, sexually forward in the sense that um, I don't think we're invited by anything in the poem to judge her unless what we're judging is something like the loneliness that can often follow. For example, if someone's a strong believer in marriage or um, monogamy, they might see this poem as basically saying, look, this is a cautionary tale. This woman is telling you what it's like to be older when you just, you know, you got together with a whole bunch of people and you didn't pick one or or settle with one or something like that right but but let's go ahead and read it and and um you'll see one of the ways the poem works is because of the metaphors meaning that uh that if we don't think of her being the tree i'm not sure what the poem does mean right but well, let me try to read this what lips my lips have kissed and where and why i have forgotten and what arms have lain under my head till morning. But the rain is full of ghosts tonight that tap and sigh upon the glass and listen for reply. And in my heart there stirs a quiet pain for unremembered lads that not again will turn to me at midnight with a cry. Thus in the winter stands the lonely tree, nor knows what birds have vanished one by one yet knows its boughs more silent than before. I cannot say what loves have come and gone. I only know that summer sang in me a little while that in me sings no more. Okay, so one of what we look at is that the second stanza, thus in the winter stands the lonely tree, we, we do see a turn uh, in, between that line and the line before it which is is pretty common in a lot of stanzas right so after um after eight lines something happens before the final six um and in this case she brings us to who she is now she said something about um the way she feels but then she pulls it toward this metaphor where we realize that she is the lonely tree right um and it's a bear tree in the sense that we know that as a tree, if it's bare now, it did have leaves. And maybe it was a seasonal thing. So one way to think about this poem might be with a metaphor of the seasons or the year. And this sounds like uh, like winter after all the leaves have fallen and there's no birds visiting the tree. There's no fruit on the tree. Um, and uh, she's the lonely one. And the people or the, the boys that she's thinking about have arrived something like ghosts. And I always think of them tapping um, on the window and um, that's all. They, they're mostly voiceless basically, right? And they are faceless because she can't remember maybe the specifics, right? But is it really sexual? That's one thing we might ask, right? So 
she says, and in my heart there stirs a quiet pain for unremembered lads. And at first she could just be talking about people of her youth, right? That, but then it says that not again will turn to me at midnight with a cry. Now, cry is one of those words that can mean so many things at the same time. They could be crying out of despondency. They could be crying um, in pleasure in the sense that, you know, cry is a, is a sound. It's not crying. It's a, it's, a, it's a loud, possibly, sound, right? And it says, thus in the winter stands a lonely tree. Now, the birds, they're going to become birds in this stanza in this in the sense that um you know they did visit before but they don't visit now so the metaphor of the year is that in earlier seasons she was amongst a crowd of birds or, or boys in real life right um it's always a little bit strange to me when you get to that last those three lines or so i cannot say what loves have come and gone is that really because she doesn't remember or could it possibly mean something else? Think about it. I cannot say. Is it possible that she can't say because she would be breaking that that dictum of, uh, you know, lovers don't kiss and tell? Or that society itself is, you know, uh, not welcoming of somebody talking about the, the people that they were with sexually? Um, so she says, I cannot say what loves have gone. Maybe she's got her lips sealed in that way, right? Um, I only know that summer sang in me a little while that in me sings no more. Okay, so this voice uh, is not her. She says what she can't say. And then she says that there was this other voice in her that was singing, but it's not singing anymore. So she has lost something. And, and I think the word singing has such a positive feeling that comes along with it that that we think in terms of it was something that um was wonderful or good or something uh that was very pleasing to have and and maybe miserable in some ways to not have anymore right um toward the top again where it says i have forgotten what arms have laid under my head till morning I think the till morning is partially why uh, most of us interpret this poem as, as her speaking about sexual affairs, not just friends or something like that, right? But the rain is full of ghosts tonight that tap and sigh. So there's a sensuous and, and sensual quality to this poem and that it, it talks about arms and head and sighing and crying and pain. And uh, the cry could be an orgasm. And she could be sort of with some camouflage writing about uh, that she's had many lovers, many light, many nights of lovers. So can you see how some of my students who maybe they already judge and they say, you know, it's wrong to just have casual sex with people might think that she's talking about how lonely she is now after having an earlier life of that. Uh, I think possibly, but I think that's too much of what we call a... Um, uh, a reduction. It's an oversimplification of it. It's interesting to me that I think if I ask people how old was the poet when she wrote this, they would probably think she's older. But Malay wrote this when she was young. So was she imagining what, you know, she might feel like someday? Or um, was she telling herself? what it was going to be like. In other words, if I keep living this way, this is what it's going to be like later. Um, maybe, maybe those things. Now, she is considered a modern woman in the strong sense, uh, in that she was, uh, she would probably have called herself and many other women in her generation more, um, um, more sexually and psychologically forward and bolder. Um, it's part of why we, we hold on to her. She's fiercely smart in her poetry. Uh, there's a certain amount of, um, you know, when we look at the stereotype of a flapper, a woman who flaunts her own individuality and sexuality and things like that, Malay sometimes uh, stands in for us on that. Um, but I hope you can see the, the metaphor of the tree and um, 
and think about how she's using that metaphor, I think to some degree to make it seem like this is a natural thing, right? To, to kiss more than one person. So want to lay, to want to lay down with more than one person. And it's natural that that's not what you're going to be doing when you're older. So I think it's part of what she's doing by using the seasons, that we know that it is natural for one season to follow the next. And there are certain phenomena, such as the leaves grow, then the leaves uh, fall. And so she might be saying that this is, this is just life in a way, right? I hope you liked it. Make sure you read it yourself, read it aloud, and see how it feels inside your mouth to read this poem.